is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm here with Dan Bingham and Brian Babler from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Uh, gentlemen, a ton of things happened this week. Obviously, the presidential election. We had unemployment this morning, cash flows, uh, moves in the interest rates. Dan, what should we be looking at right now? What's important? Sure, Mike. You know, you, you mentioned the employment number, and it's a uh, number that obviously gets a lot of focus. I would say that it's probably, it was probably the least focused item uh, of a release of the employment number based on uh, everything that's going on. And clearly, the election had everyone's focus. Um, the continued count uh, of the votes of the election, um, and I won't say the uncertainty of the outcome, but the um, the timing um, of that count is uh, it continues to have everyone's focus. Um, you know, how the uh, markets evolved here, and I think going into the election, there was a concern uh, or uh, uh, maybe an expectation of a uh, blue wave sweep, which uh, the prospects of that would be um, uh, uh, larger stimulus along with uh, the uh, likelihood of higher rates. And with that, you saw um, uh, close to record numbers of Treasury uh, bond shorts going into the election. Um, that was covered um, when it became uh, apparent or at least uh, clearer that Biden, um, uh, while he might win, um, the Senate could remain um, uh, Republican control. Um, and you saw a, a very heavy short covering in the rates market where on uh, Wednesday morning and through the day Wednesday, uh, the long bond was up as much as uh, three and a half points. Uh, so uh, pretty heavy short covering. Within the municipal market, it's uh, interesting because uh, expectations of higher uh, tax rates might not uh, manifest itself if the uh, Republicans hold control of, Cong of the Senate, um, uh, which was putting a pretty strong uh, view within the uh, market that municipals could outperform, could strongly outperform. Um, but we've clearly had a light calendar. The calendar this week was under a billion. Next week's calendar is 3.3 billion. Um, and some of the monies um, uh, continue to, uh, I think, uh, flow into the municipal market. This past week, we had 970 million of outflows. I think uh, people fearing higher rates or the prospect of higher rates. Um, but some of that money is coming back into the municipal market in the light calendar um, and where we start to hit some of the strong seasonals. Um, so the municipal market actually uh, fared, fared uh, okay in here. 10-year muni is settling in at 81 basis points and 11 basis point improvement on the week. And 30-year muni is settling at 157, which is a 14 basis point improvement on the week. And one thing, uh, Eric Kazatsky at Bloomberg uh, Intelligence pointed out uh, earlier today that a lot of those outflows were actually uh, the previous Friday. Well, you know, it's a, it's a week-long outflow number. Most of the, the uh, shift hit at the early part of the week. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, those investors missed out on the rally. Yeah, um, but it does, uh, it does suggest that uh, they may be coming back as as the market stabilizes uh, looking forward. Yeah, not um, an unusual uh, uh, dynamic where you have people being they're trying to be a little cautious coming into an election and in the, in the uh, prospective swings as dramatic as this one did. So, Brian, um, on the flip side, in the new issue market, it was one place where not a lot was going on this week. Uh, what kind of activity did you see and, and where was BAM active? Yeah, yeah, as Dan mentioned, uh, definitely a very light calendar. Uh, you know, for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about all the supply that's been coming, and and it was certainly evident that uh, people were pulling supply ahead of the election uh, to kind of get in front of the results. So this week, extremely quiet. Everybody avoided the week completely. Um, under 800 million uh, was what was uh, officially priced, and and that's you know led by the highlight deal of the week being 130 million for Maine Turnpike. Um, so, you know, very sparse calendar, um, only about 230 million sold competitively, um, you know, just uh, very light all around. That would be light for uh, for a holiday week, <laughs> let alone uh, a full week. Um, but, uh, but you know, the deals that got priced, as, as uh, Dan mentioned, market was very constructive. Um, so, you know, anything that did ultimately come uh, did just fine. Uh, if anything, perhaps it did a little bit better because there was nothing else around competing for it. Uh, this week was definitely a good week for secondary offerings. Um, you know, consensus amongst traders was that there was definitely a bid side, um, whether that was coming from other dealer desks that uh, that had lightened up uh, their inventory ahead of the election or buyers that, you know, that did have some cash to put to work. Um, there was definitely uh, there was definitely some uh, some strength to the market that, uh, you know, especially in the high grade space. 
Um, you know, that being said, it was still also a light week uh, in general market volume. Uh, you know, we saw MSRB reported trades under 8 billion um, every day until Thursday when it ticked up to about 9 billion. Uh, you know, typically midweek, you're seeing 14, 15, 16 billion change hands. Uh, so, you know, definitely low, uh, low volume. But, uh, but overall, uh, you know, we still managed to squeak out uh, a decent week uh, considering what was going on. BAM insured uh, eight deals for about 60 million in par. Uh, some of the highlights there were Newcastle Area School District in Pennsylvania. That was priced by Benning and Scattergood. It was about 18 million bonds. Uh, a competitive sale for Collin County Mud in Texas was purchased by Samco. Uh, that was 11 million and uh, 10 million for the city of Lorain, Ohio was priced by Stiefel. Um, so, you know, a, a handful of deals still coming to market, still benefiting from, uh, from the use of insurance. Uh, and hopefully next week we, we see things pick up a little bit more. Um, you know, following this week, We'll have the Veterans Day holiday uh, midweek next week, so still relatively light. I think Dan mentioned about 3.3 billion scheduled to price. Um, that'll be, uh, you know, that'll be kind of uh, uh, spread out throughout the week across different sectors and things like that. Um, we've got about 130 million scheduled uh, or on tap to sell. Um, some of the highlights there are 43 million uh, for Northampton Community College District. Uh, in Pennsylvania, that's going to be through the Pennsylvania State Public Building Authority, uh, priced by Janney. Um, we'll have West Mifflin uh, Sewer in Pennsylvania. That's also going to be a, a BAM Green Star transaction, uh, priced by Piper Sandler. For $29 million for Kankakee, Illinois, is going to be priced by Bernardi Security. So, uh, you know, uh, still a little bit quiet, um, but, uh, but picking, picking back up uh, next week. Uh, the interesting thing will be to see you know, how much of the supply was really pulled ahead of the election. And, you know, if we can get back to, you know, seven or eight billion a week from here to the end of uh, to the end of the year, because keep in mind, we've got Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, you know, we've got some slow weeks uh, to look ahead to. It is interesting that we're hearing from BAM's underwriters that they are uh, getting busy again. They had maybe a week of, of quieter deal flow, but that's picking up again. And that makes sense. Uh, the smaller and medium issuers that, that make up the majority of BAMS transactions tend to be more stable across the year, so it, it makes sense that their volume would uh, would be returning uh, back into the market. Um, also, uh, as we go into next week, and hopefully we'll get a, a little more clarity around the election, uh, we'll have some more uh, thoughts about the implications of that for the market going forward. In the meantime, uh, Sean, our uh, CEO, Sean McCarthy, was on with uh, Bloomberg Radio earlier this week. He shared some initial thoughts, uh, talked a little bit about some of the bond referendums that passed uh, earlier this week, about $45 billion of bonds were on the ballot uh, for voters to weigh in on, and the vast majority of those appear to have passed, uh, led by $7 billion for uh, Los Angeles Unified School District. Um, so while that's a relatively low number for a presidential election year, uh, the passage rate seems to still show uh, strong public support for infrastructure investment. So uh, we'll have more implications uh, and talk about that some more next week. Thanks, guys, for your time. Uh, we'll see you then. Great. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of market volatility and illiquidity, BAM insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, and adding BAM insured municipal bonds to your portfolio is easy. Talk to your investment advisor, visit buildamerica.com, or look for BAM eligible bonds on the Perform Portfolio Management System. BAM. Build America Mutual.